Welcome to the Idiot's Guide. I'm Mackie Hall, and I was recently looking into how to build simple leaf and branch shapes. And I came across, of all things, the Olive Garden logo. And that got me looking into what you can do with a pen tool and the stroke function. What I found out was how easily you could make some really radical tree, branch, and leaf shapes. And they have a lot of uses beyond the above mentioned logo. This tutorial is a great way to learn what you can do with pen and stroke, and you can do lots. All right, check this out. This is what we're going to be building today. It's a simple olive branch using almost exclusively pen and stroke. All right, no more waiting. Let's go. All right, let's get started. First thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new document. Our new document will have a width of 1,000 points, a height of 1,000 points, a single artboard, and if you scroll down, we will be using the RGB color mode. If you're looking to output to print, of course, you can click on Advanced Options and select the CMYK color mode. In this case, though, we'll stick to RGB. Let's go ahead and create. All right, before we get started, I want to mention a few things. First thing I'm going to mention is that we are using the Essentials Classic Workspace. To switch to the Essentials Classic Workspace, all you need to do is go to the top right, click on Switch Workspaces, and select Essentials Classic. The reason I use Essentials Classic is because it presents all the tools that I need to most efficiently create the pieces that I want to create. Next thing I want to mention is that we're going to be using Smart Guides. To switch to Smart Guides or to activate Smart Guides, all you need to do is go to View, Smart Guides, or Control U. Next thing I want to mention is that we are going to be using the bottom center of the page to highlight tips and tricks, hotkey and key command recommendations. On that note, here's my last thing. We are building this piece on a PC. That means that if you're building on a Mac, all you need to do is swap in the command key or the control key anytime I recommend it. That being said, let's go ahead and import our art. Again, it's going to be the Olive Garden logo. We do that by selecting File, Place, selecting our logo and importing it. We'll click anywhere on the page for that. Let's go ahead and center it horizontally and vertically just to get it in the right place. And let's go ahead and scale it down. We'll double click our scale tool and let's scale it down to about 25%. Looks good right there. Let's go ahead and push it to the top of the page. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to grab my selection tool, click and drag vertically holding my shift key to make sure it stays perfectly vertical on the drag. Once that's done, all I need to do is lock my piece down so I don't select it inadvertently. I do that by selecting Object, Lock, Selection, or Control 2. There we go. Let's go ahead and zoom in on our page just a little bit and make sure that the Olive Garden leaves and some space under it are available so that we can work. Let's go ahead and zoom in. That looks pretty good. Let's see how that fits in. We're close on that. Let's zoom out one step. And then let's go ahead and push it up. That looks pretty good right there. So with that in mind, let's get started. Like I said, we're going to be building this piece almost exclusively using the pen tool. And so this is going to be a great opportunity for you to learn this piece. All right, the first thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and grab our pen tool. And let's focus on our top branch of the logo. Now notice the curve that it creates. So we're going to build a branch with that exact curve. I'll start by clicking on the bottom left, moving up and dragging vertically. I'm going to hold my shift key to make sure my curve is perfectly vertical. And then I'll go over here and click right there. I think that's pretty decent. It's not perfect, but I think that works well enough. Now that we've got that, let's go ahead and do one thing. Let's go ahead and make sure we've got our green on our stroke and our fill is transparent. The way we're going to do that, we're going to go over here to our fill and stroke and we're going to swap our fill and stroke so that there's something in it. We'll select our stroke and let's go ahead and find a green that's close to the green that we are looking at in the logo itself. Let's bring it a little bit more towards yellow perhaps. I think that's close enough right there. We'll go ahead and use that, click OK. Now that we've done that, let's grab our selection tool so we don't carry around the pen line. Once we've got that, what we're going to do is we're going to increase the stroke so that our stroke matches the thickest part of the branch. The way we're going to do that is let's click and open our stroke window. You can click it on the right sidebar 
or of course you can go window stroke or control F10. Once that's done, let's go ahead and increase the weight incrementally until the width is the same as the bottom of the branch. I think that looks pretty good right there. Let's go ahead and deselect our branch just to have a look. It works perfectly. Let's go ahead and reselect our shape. And let's talk about the stroke tool itself. As you've seen up top, we've got the weight, but look down beneath, we've got a bunch of options. Notice we can add a cap, we can change our cap style. We're going to leave this at the first one. We can change our corner style, that won't do anything since we don't have any corners. And if this is a closed shape, meaning that there is no start or end, then we can change the stroke align to either of those elements. We can also include a dashed line right there. We don't need to do that. And of course, we can include arrowheads if we so choose. In our case, we do not need to use any arrowheads right there. At the bottom, though, we've got one of the most interesting tools. It's called the profile. Now, if we select it, note that we start with uniform and we've got all kinds of different profiles that we can use to change our shape. That's exactly what we're looking for. If you scroll down or if you move down to width profile number four, let's go ahead and click on that and look what happens to our stroke. Let's go ahead and deselect. That looks pretty good. That mimics the decreasing width of a branch. So that looks really good right there. If we wanted to increase the stroke, Notice I can select it, I'll increase it to 14, and notice that it increases incrementally and that the base of that branch stays at 14. Everything else grows incrementally. So let's go ahead and deselect that. We've got our branch that looks pretty good. Now let's go ahead and add all the leaf and berry stems. The way we do that, again, we're going to grab our pen tool and we're just gonna start at the bottom and just click off of our stroke. I think that looks probably pretty good right there. We'll add a little bit of a band. Let's deselect by pressing our control key and clicking off of our shape. And let's continue working our way up. All right, that looks pretty good right there. Let's go ahead and grab our selection tool and select all of our stems. Once we've done that, let's make sure that our branch is deselected. We'll hold our shift key and deselect our branch just like that. And then let's go ahead and increase the weight of those strokes. In this case, we took it all the way up to three points. Let's go ahead and deselect, see if that works. I think that's perfect right there. Now that we've done that, note that we aren't changing the profile of these shapes whatsoever. Next thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and start with our leaves. We're going to do the leaves the same way we did our stems. All we're going to be doing is drawing out line segments. Again, we're going to grab our pen tool and we'll start from the top here. We'll go ahead and click here and we'll click and drag out line shapes just like that. Let's continue, let's deselect by pressing our control key and let's keep moving our way down the piece. Note that the length of the leaves is fairly uniform. And note that it is not perfect. One thing worth mentioning, we did not include a leaf shape on two of the stems. The reason we did not is because we're going to be putting a circular shape that's representative of a berry on each of those stems. Next thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and grab our selection tool and let's select all of our leaf shapes. We're going to be doing that by clicking on them, holding our shift key, and that will allow us to select multiple shapes. Once we've got that complete, let's go ahead and increase that thickness, in this case, to about 17 points. I think that looks good right there. I'll go to profile. This time, instead of selecting with profile number four, I'm going to select with profile number one. Look how it tapers in on both ends and is thick in the middle. Let's click on that. Let's go ahead and deselect. That is exactly the shape that we're looking for. And notice right away that we're already working our way towards that full completed branch. Let's continue. This time around, we're going to change tact a little bit. We're going to grab our ellipse tool. We'll click on this and hold it. We'll select our ellipse tool. 
And then let's go ahead and just click to create two round shapes. I'm going to be doing this by clicking and holding next to my stems. It will hold the shift key to make it perfectly symmetrical. And at the size that we like, we'll release. Let's go ahead and arrow our piece into the right place. That looks pretty good right there. And then let's go ahead and change our strokes to fills. Let's go ahead and deselect, see how that looks? Great, let's do it again for the other one. This time around, all I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be copying and pasting in front. And then I'm going to be holding my directional keys to arrow our copy into the right place. Looks pretty good right there. Let's go ahead and deselect our shape. Excellent. Again, the way I deselected my shape is I held my control key and I clicked anywhere on my artboard. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and add some highlights to our respective shapes. The way we're going to do that is we are going to change our stroke to white and our fill to transparent. We'll just trade right there and we'll double click on our stroke and let's make sure our stroke is all the way white. That's perfect right there. Let's click OK there. And let's go ahead and grab our pen tool and we'll start on our bottom most leaf. Let's zoom in just a little bit. And let's bring that to center. Now let's start with drawing our shapes once again. I'll click here, drag out like that, and let's continue with the rest of our pieces. Once again, I'm holding my control key to deselect, I press my control key and notice I convert to direct selection and I click on my artboard just like that. Let's continue. Hit control key, deselect. I'll do it one more time here. That looks good right there. I'm gonna hit the control key one more time. I'm going to keep going with my lines because I want to have a little bit of a color change on our berries as well. So let's do that again. I'll click over here on the top right of my berry. That looks good right there. Let's deselect. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'll click and draw a curve just like that. Let's deselect. Now that doesn't look like much, but it will in just a second. Let's go ahead and grab our selection tool and let's select every white stroke that we just created. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and increase the weight to about five points. Let's see what that looks like. Once we've done that, let's go ahead and go back to our profile. Let's click and open that up. And this time again, we are going to go to width profile number one. Let's see what that looks like. Let's go ahead and deselect. And there you go. That looks really, really good right there. Now, of course, you can increase or decrease the thickness of your stroke. All you need to do is, again, select all the strokes that you created. and maybe take that down. Let's see what four looks like. I think that's a little bit better right there. Let's go ahead and deselect that. And that looks outstanding. We've got a couple more things to do, and I think we can call it a wrap. The next thing we're going to do is we're gonna take all of these strokes and convert them to filled shapes, then use our Pathfinder tool to unify the respective shapes. So let's do that. First thing we're going to do is we're going to select all of our shapes just like that. And then we'll go to Object, Expand appearance. Now this is going to convert some of our strokes to filled shapes, but it won't do it all the way. So we have to do it one more time. So we'll go back to object and we'll select expand instead of expand appearance. When we do that, note the expand window comes up. Let's make sure that fill and stroke are selected and let's click OK. There you go with that. That's exactly what we want to do. Next thing we're going to do, we want to segregate the colored elements. So if we ever need to change colors, either with the inside color or the outside color, we can. Here's how we do that. Let's go ahead and deselect our shape one more time. And let's grab our selection tool, we'll hold our shift key, and let's select all of our green shapes. Once they're selected, let's go over to Window, Pathfinder, or Shift Control F9. Let's go up to shape modes and let's select unite. Note that all of our individual shapes have now become one single unified shape. Let's go ahead and deselect that. And let's go ahead and select all of our white shapes. Now we're gonna drag across our entire shape. We'll hold our shift key and deselect the green shape that we just created. 
And now under shape modes, let's go back and select Unite one more time. Nothing appears to have happened, but those unique shapes are now acting as a singular shape so that we can change their respective colors at any time. Next thing we're going to do is let's deselect our piece. Let's keep our selection tool selected. Let's drag across our entire shape just like that. Let's go to Object, Group, or Control G. Let's deselect our shape. Let's bring our entire page into view. Let's go ahead and center this thing. Let's select this thing and let's align it horizontally and vertically just so we can see it on the middle of the page. Let's deselect and we are done. All right, well done. Now go ahead and see what you can do in your own bits of artwork. Want ideas? Go ahead and Google leaf logo and tree logo. Want more ideas? Try your hand at pinstriping. All right, with that being said, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. Otherwise, throw me a like. I'd really appreciate that. Otherwise, subscribe. I'd appreciate that just a little bit more. We'll see you next time. Peace. <music>